Welcome to episode two of doing more with your Sony a7 IV. Today we're going to be doing architectural interior photography with available light. And the very first thing we got to talk about is that right there. It is so essential to have a tripod to do any kind of real estate photography. It's very, very, very important. Um, you want everything to look as good as it possibly can look. And in order to do that, you have to have lots and lots of depth of field, which is the opposite trend of doing portrait work with everything blown out of focus in the background. In real estate photography, you want really everything in focus. And in order to do that without using super high ISOs, we use a tripod. And so it's very important. And then the, the easy way to do it, you don't have to buy any gadgets or anything. The easy way to do it is to use the self timer on the camera. Very simple. So first, you want to make sure you have a good tripod that can lock down, uh, that's easy to level. And um, the second thing you need are the appropriate lenses or lens. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and dive into the lenses right now and talk about that first. And then we're going to actually go around and we're going to shoot uh, the interiors of this house. This is a four bedroom, two bath house with a full basement. So this will be interesting. So here we go. All right, so there are four primary lenses that I use for full frame real estate photography. And the first one is the first one. This is the 12 to 24 uh, G lens. I have not upgraded yet to the G Master because I also bought the 14 1.8, which we'll talk about in a minute. But ultimately, this little guy here, this or the 12 to 24 G Master lens, either one of those, this is the Mac Daddy of real estate photography because Everybody wants every room in every house or building to look as big as possible. And you also want sharp, okay? And so basically having a zoom that goes from 12 to 24 millimeter is pretty much ideal for every situation. This lens is really the ultimate for doing real estate photography. It also happens to be the ultimate for doing landscape photography. Uh, so many people that already have landscape setups are really already equipped really quite well for doing real estate photography. Um, so the obvious advantage here is that you're going to be at f8 or 11, so you don't need 2.8 necessarily. f4 is plenty fine, and uh, this works really well. The new 14 millimeter 1.8 G Master lens is also something that's a really neat lens. Sometimes we have to go into very dark situations, and uh, occasionally when we're doing architectural stuff, you can't use a tripod, or you have to use a tripod, you have to have a permit. So like if you're going to go in Grand Central Station in New York City and try and do interiors there and use a tripod, they're going to come after you and make you pay a permit and all this stuff. It's a hassle. And so sometimes it's expedient to use a much faster lens that's still super wide, and this fits the bill really well. If you don't have the, either of the two 12-24 zooms and you don't have a 14-1.8 G Master, the next best thing is the 20mm 1.8 G lens. This is an excellent lens for the value. It matches up really well with the 8518 if you're kind of building a little system. Um, I really love the lens. It's very reasonably priced and it's super fast and it's super wide. And you might be wondering why there's a 40 millimeter lens stuck in there. Occasionally when you're doing the interiors of a house or a building, there is an architectural appointment that's really important to the architect or the seller, something that you have to shoot and a super wide lens is not appropriate. So. It, for example, in this house, uh, all the fixtures in the bathrooms are brand new. So I will probably be shooting the faucets and things like that. And I'll use the 40 to do that. Not everyone has a full frame setup for doing architectural interiors or real estate photography. And so if you're shooting APS-C, the very, very, very best lens to use is this one. This is the 10 to 18 millimeter F4 uh, zoom lens. This is a fantastic lens. It's extremely sharp. Um, this lens is so sharp that you can use it on a full frame body and actually see wider than uh, the 10 millimeter and you can still get sharp edges out of beyond what's there on a full frame camera. I know that's probably confusing, but basically if you are using an A6000 or an A6100 or an A6600, my personal favorite of the APS-Cs, this is the lens for you if you're going to do a lot of work interior. This is a great lens. And it's great for the same reasons that the 12 to 24 G and G Master lenses is so great for architectural interiors. You're ready for every room, no matter how big it is, no matter how small it is. 
Okay, so first, this is the big room. This is the largest room in the house, and so we want to make it look really big because it is really big. Um, basically, I've got the 12 to 24, and I have selected a little bit the other side of 12, so it's probably at 13 millimeter or so. Um, my exposure is one fifth of a second at f8. Now at 12 millimeter, everything's going to be in focus anyway, but it's just going to be great. So this this would be perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the self timer uh, on the camera so that I won't ever touch the shutter release. It'll just go by itself. And I'm going to kind of hide behind it. So here we go. Hold your breath. Just kidding. I don't hold my breath. Okay, here's my second shot. Just looking at from the other corner of that same room. I'm on silent shutter, that's why you're not hearing a click. So, just in case you're wondering. This next shot is gonna be, I'm actually almost out of the room. So I'm, again, I wanna make this room look big. It is big, but I wanna make it look even bigger. So um, what I've done is I've put the camera where it can see this wall and it can see this wall here as well. Um, and it's very, very important, whatever lighting is available, you gotta turn it on. So uh, there's a light on this fan hood. There's a light over the little fluorescent over the sink. Um, there's even a light, yeah, oven light. So you really want every light you can get to be turned on. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and get back behind the camera and uh, let's see what we got. Yeah, I'm at 200 ISO, I'm at a third of a second at F8. So here we go. And then in a wooden floor house, um, you don't wanna move or step. So there's the exposure. So what I was saying is like right now we're, we're on, on ceramic tile, but in a, um, in a typical situation with its wood floors, don't be like fidgeting and moving around. You really don't want to do that. It'll mess up your uh, exposure because you might have some movement from you walking on the floors. It's all looking good. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is set up for a detail shot of the counters because this is a really nice counter setup with a cooktop and then a modern sink. So I'm just going to kind of shoot down there. Also, it's going to pick up all the subway tile. All this is new to this house, so it's pretty important. So at this point, I'm actually going to zoom in um, to 24 because I think it's going to just work better for this shot. Also, I'm utilizing the built-in level um, that the Sony cameras have. If you keep hitting the display button, uh, eventually you're going to see this weird thing. It looks like a aircraft landing thing or whatever. And uh, as you as you rock the camera back and forth, um, it'll show you that you're out of level, and then it'll both ends turn green. Everything turns green, and then you just lock down. Once you get it to be green, then what you're going to do is you're going to just sort of add your tilt in there. So I'm going to go a little bit this way just to show how long these counters are. Yeah, this is nice. This looks really good. So I'm going to lock that down and. Go ahead and shoot. Third of a second, F8. Okay. I'm shooting another angle of the kitchen right now. Um, and it's kind of a transitional thing. I have from that corner and that corner, but I don't have this side. This picture will then show us what's next. And so as you're going through a gallery online, it's helpful for a potential buyer to go kind of see the story. So I basically will wind myself around and, and kind of shoot these transitional shots in addition to the normal stuff um, just to be able to help people understand the house layout. So here we go. Okay. And on we go. We're going to do the master bedroom next. Okay, sometimes you have to be a little bit of a contortionist. Um, this shot I've got lined up as the master bedroom, but I can see the plunger in the corner of the bathroom. Don't need to see the plunger. So I'm gonna get that out of there. We're gonna pull this out as well. I mean, we all need to use these things, but you don't wanna see them in a real estate picture. <laughs> so there we go. 
So now it's like huge cavernous room, but it's almost too huge. So I'm gonna zoom out to 14 millimeter for this shot. And as you can kind of see what I'm doing here, I'm, if you see the doorway, hopefully you can see this, um, the door to the bathroom, it's going like this. So what you want to do is you want to kind of move the camera until the lines straighten. And uh, like you can see on the edge here, now the lines are all straight. Now, what I'll do in post is I'll cut the top of the frame off because uh, it's too much ceiling, but you really want your lines straight. And then once your lines are straight there, they'll be straight everywhere. So it's pretty useful to be able to do that. And this really picks up the floors. The floors in this house are gorgeous. They're all distressed and... Okay. Okay, for this shot, this bathroom is super, super, super narrow. It is literally... Um, this bathroom is four feet wide. I think it's four feet, nine inches wide. Um, so I can't shoot the entire thing from this perspective. So what I'm gonna do is just set up and get the vanity and the mirror and the shower, there's a stand-up shower in here. I'll get it one way and then I'll just flip. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift this over so I can see the commode. Um, and notice I've got one leg of the tripod in the bathroom as I do this. And so now I get a real clean, clean shot. And it also shows the, uh, I'm gonna have to actually close this so I can level. And uh, so there's my level. So now I'm level. And now I'm gonna kinda go up and down and straighten this door frame. This door frame's going like this right now and this door is going like this. So I wanna straighten them by just lifting, by tilting up. And now they're straight up and down. And again, I will crop the ceiling out of this a lot, uh, but it'll, it'll work. And then one last thing, it should be obvious to people, the potential seller, but I'm gonna just show that this is a pocket door. And I'm gonna shoot one more frame just so people can understand that it's a pocket door because pocket doors are really in right now and people dig them. And now I'm gonna flip all the way over to the other side of the room and do the corner here. You may have noticed that this uh, door is ajar. It's really important to show lights in the closets. So if there's a light in the closet, go ahead and show it. So I'm setting up this second picture here. Notice I'm putting the tripod leg right in the corner so I'm as wide as I can possibly be. I'm gonna flip this back out so I can look down at it and get everything right. I'm gonna actually pull it out a little bit so I can see. So this is just showing the, the rest of the interior of the room and I'm correcting for the doorways. And again, I'm at 12 millimeter, it's perfect. So I've got it all set and I'm gonna move it back so I get the absolute maximum I can. And then go ahead and, I can't step out too far because the camera will actually see me at 12 millimeters. So I'm just gonna kinda of chill right here and lean against the wall. Okay. Okay, I've done with the master bedroom now. So this, is, this next one's another transitional shot and it's showing us down the hallway to the other two, uh, three bedrooms. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda of shoot that and there's a big, exposure disparity here. Uh, the hallway is really dark and just has uh, you know a, a two light fixture. This bedroom, the smallest bedroom, has a huge light coming in uh, and a big thing, but I, I just chose an exposure that'll work. And then um, I use uh, Affinity Photo, and in Affinity Photo I'll be able to like make all this work uh, in post. So here we go. Cool. This is a really, really small bedroom. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. So again, I'm just putting the tripod legs just inside the door so that the lens is actually just barely inside. I'm definitely shooting this at 12 millimeter. Um, I am having difficulty judging proper exposure from the back screen because I'm so front, so backlit myself. There's all this light streaming in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look in the EVF because that will give me the best possible look at this. And I'll be able to make all my, yeah, I was overexposed by a lot actually. And again, see the wooden floors? You just gotta be stopped. Make sure nobody else is walking around. Okay, so I'm gonna dive in. So 
So I did another quick shot in that uh, tiny bedroom, and now I'm looking at the, this would be bedroom number three. And yeah, this looks good. Um, again, it's I'm just getting as much as I can in the frame. I'm, I'm pretty much locked down at 12 millimeter. I get the camera level, and then I'm gonna tilt up and down until all the lines straighten in the room. And that's right there. And then I'm just gonna shoot. It's pretty, pretty easy, actually. Yeah, exposure looks good. I'll tell you, these floors look great with the gray and the white. It's just really nice. All right, so I'm looking into bedroom number four. And what I'm doing is, I'm again, it's a transitional thing. So I'm showing people where they've come from and where we're going. And it's really good because this is the largest bedroom other than the master. And it's right next to the bathroom. So this is a kind of an important picture. And uh, so I'm going to just level, which I'm already level, and then I'm going to go ahead and make the doorway straight. Good. And now, now that the transition's done, I can just go into the bedroom. All right. So I'm going to sneak in like I always do, just tripod leg just inside the door. Um, then I'm going to level. I'm not even close to there's level. And then uh, I could see the entire wall there. I could see this whole wall in the frame, which is handy. And I'm going to go ahead. I can't see this door, so that doesn't really matter. But the, the door frame is out, so I'm going to go ahead and make that door frame straight. And the windows, there we go. Very good. Again, level. Level first always, and then straighten, straighten everything. A little bit of the window. All right, now we're gonna come back around and shoot the bathroom. Um, this one has a lot of really nice tile work in it. So that's a big, huge selling point. A couple of things. Some of the lenses that I've shown you today um, are very expensive and uh, you don't have to buy them, you can rent them. I'd recommend LensRentals.com as a great place to get uh, things from. Also, if you're a member of Sony Pro Services, uh, which is easy to do and it costs a hundred bucks, um, you can register there and you get to borrow equipment from Sony directly as part of their pro service. You have to qualify and you can look at that on AlphaUniverse.com. There's no substitute for a good tripod and a really good, super sharp, super wide angle lens or zoom. Uh, and being in full frame is really, really important. Um, now, remember in the first part of the video, I showed you a picture of the 10 to 18 zoom that's made for APS-C. While that is an excellent lens, all lenses made for APS-C cameras are going to have more and more distortion than on full frame. So you're always best to do the full frame route, always, if it's possible. Um, if not, you know, the 10 to 18 is your friend, definitely. Uh, but if you're full frame, you really want that 12 to 24 G Master or the G lens. And then if you can't quite swing that, the 21.8 is a great option, the G lens. Um, the 24.14 is not as useful. It's just not wide enough, especially in a bathroom or a small room. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm Pat Murphy Racy, a Sony artisan of imagery. Thanks for watching episode two of Doing More with your A7 IV.